This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Nairn Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Light Blended Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C, Hannah Green, Neuralia, Jeff Searles, Eric Reed, Grayson Ishara, Ashley Bradley, and Laura Lewis. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Alyssa Hill and Josh Sultan to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. And we also have a name pronunciation correction for our newest producer, Rye Cat. So thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly appreciate it. This is Uno Bloody Namesta, and you're listening to the Goat Kissers from the Wheel Weaves podcast. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 45 and 46 of The Gathering Storm. Yeah, chapter 45 is The Tower Stands, and chapter 46 is To Be Forged to Again. Be Forged Again. Oh, we did it. We made it. Yeah, I love we it. We made it through the entire splitting of the tower we arc. We did it. We, we went we from made it. the coup to the split to Elida. Oh my uh, god. The rebels. Oh and my the, god. Egwene, the Amerlin, and now she's like the Amerlin Amerlin. Book four. Oh, like the whole thing. That was book four, right? Oh my goodness, yeah. we did it. We did Whoa. it. We did it, guys. We did it. We did it. And okay. I'm right. About Egwene becoming the Amerlin. Okay, okay. Yep. The you know real what? one. Yes. Uh-huh. Not that fake poser rebel Amerlin. She's That's like the, right. the actual top the dog. The actual one. Yeah. I said it. And yeah. I said she was just going to ride in and be like, hey, and they'll be like, oh, no fighting. You could just be the Amberlin. And she'll be like, ah, I accept. That's what I said. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much it was what I said, right? Yeah. That's There's what I lot... meant to say if I didn't say that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard it's, you say that. You said that off. what I was yeah. thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I'm clearly still unwell. I feel worse this week than I did even last week recording. Yeah. And and like yesterday, like recorded yesterday, but it's like no, maybe no, I'll feel better tomorrow. It's I'll like no, be- no, I still feel sick. Yes, but you do have a lovely pink drink. It's supposed to cheer me up. And I poured. A I nice know. Little... I was like, oh, what are you pouring this for? Is it for me being right? And you're like, about what? <laughs> like rude. I don't know. This entire thing where I predicted a Gwen would be the Amerlin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Comes I don't know. to fruition. You know, because even way back, I'm like right. book. Book one, Morin was like, ah, you keep you doing things Amarlin. this way. You, yeah. And I was like, ah, she's going to be the Amarlin seat. I think you did say that. I did. I think that one's on for, for sure. For sure I did. Yeah. Okay. Probably. So, probably definitely. I said that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think a really important, well-rounded fun fact for this one, and the reason we're going to talk about and drink these shots, well, first off, it's because we did get a really cool shot glass mm-hmm. from the Canada of the United States. One of the Canada's. One of the Canada's. It's Minnesota, eh? It is Minnesota. Yeah. I have such a soft spot in my heart for Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> my first real road trip as kind of an adult. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, 19 is kind of an adult. Or no, maybe I was a little... No. Why did we go to the States when we weren't even 21? That sounds stupid. But I was 19. <laughs> yeah. And we drove to Minnesota. We drove to Minneapolis. Yeah. From Winnipeg. Especially when it's like, I've been drinking it for two years in Canada. Yeah. And I can't drink here. Yeah. <laughs> crazy Mm -hmm. that actually does sound crazy that we did that but Mm. we did i went with spencer and our boyfriends at the time yeah (laughs) it was my first real adult road trip it was six hours fantastic to minneapolis and we went to the mall of america amazing yeah yeah and we also went to the water park of america ah both of america's are there yeah amazing i know okay so thanks to scott and tara but especially thanks to sam who's the one who convinced scott to read the books nice because sam was already doing it from my understanding yeah so good on him for pressuring cool scott into reading it yeah and And minnesota also has red lake falls where we go tubing that's right yeah or used to yeah (laughs) a couple of times we went camping and tubing and when you say tubing it's mostly like camping and drinking with tubing involved and then you tube down a river down the river you sit in a river safely and then go down the river yeah yep yeah okay good why are we doing shots? Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. The fun fact. There was a second part of this, not just the cool mini soda shot glass. That's like basically just all the well, Minnesota things, Well, clearly the first shot of whiskey last week didn't make me feel better. Right. It didn't cure my cold. We'll do so, a, a twofer here, so. Maybe this one. Maybe. Will. Okay. So, 
I thought fun facts about the White Tower and Tar Valen would be appropriate. Yeah. And this is based on information that we've seen in the book so far and also the big book, like the big white book that had all the information and the stuff. The art book? Yeah. So yep. there's like collections of information here, but I need you to go with this just a little bit here for how we're going to get there. So It in, seems to be a theme. Just go with it. Okay? Okay. Good. For your fun facts as of late. You know, <laughs> we're, we're like 400 episodes deep. I know. And I realize <laughs> I need to make this many fun are facts. Are we at 400 yet? Not quite yet. Okay, almost, I'm, yeah. I'm watching. Oh, you but are? But anyways, okay. yeah. I have no idea. So in the old tongue, Valen of Tar Valen, Valen means guard. Valen Luca. Okay, stay with me. Oh, okay. we're not going that far off tangent here. Okay. Valen means guard in the old tongue. Okay. Tar means tower. Guard tower. Other way. Tower guard. There you go. Tower guard, which is kind of funny because that's actually what the tower guard is called too. Like the, the guards guard. of the tower. Tower guard. Okay. Okay. Now, more specifically, this is a play on Tower of the Guard because in another super popular fantasy series that takes a lot of inspiration, right, for Wheel of Time is Lord of the Rings. Mm hmm. And because. In Lord of the Rings, we've got Minas Tirith, which is like the big castle. The If you remember in the mountain, the big white one that the Gondorans are from. Gondorians. Yeah. Right? At the Something last movie. happens there. They big like battle. ride up the walls and stuff. Yeah. Ghost army. Yeah. Right? That's where the ghost army comes in in the third movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's Minas Tirith. Okay. And in Lord of the Rings, Minas Tirith is named that because it means Tower of the Guard. Okay. And... Minas Tirith is what stands between the forces of evil that threaten to destroy the world, just like Tar Valen, uh -huh, Tower of the Guard. Sure it does, yes. And what did Gondor build to strengthen the city? They built the White Tower. It's literally called the White Tower in Lord of the Rings. Oh, is it? In Tower oh, of the Guard. Cool. So now in Lord of the Rings, we've got the city named Tower of the Guard with a White Tower. And in Wheel of Time, we've got the city named Tower of Guard with the White Tower. There it is. There you go. That's the connection. That's a good one. Now, which White Tower do you think is bigger? Uh, I don't care. You got to answer. The Wheel of Time. Yeah, apparently. Okay. I've, and I have not fact-checked that. I was going to say, how do all. you even Apparently, find that in out? Lord of the Rings, it's like 300 feet tall. But then in Wheel of Time, it's like 600 feet tall for the White Tower. I'm, I have not verified this information. Well, like, how long are feet? Yeah, that's another series, That's right? another issue. Mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. verified. But it's funny because, you know. it's paces. And it's bigger. And spans <laughs> and stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's... And we measure people in heads. He's a head taller than me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a really big head. There you go. <laughs> okay. Cheers, Cheers to the Scott. White Tower. And Scott. And Scott. And, and Sam and... and Tara. And Minnesota. And Minnesota. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> and cheers to me feeling better. Yeah. And I actually want to make a bit of a correction. I was rereading the email here. Okay. That I got from Scott. And so Sam was trying to peer pressure Scott, managed to peer pressure Tara into reading it, nice. and then peer combined like the that. peer pressure of both convinced Scott. Okay. So. All around. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Good job. Now everybody go find more people to peer pressure yeah. into reading this series. I like I like it. We can do it. I also like the, the moose on the shot class. Yeah, all the Minnesota things. All the Minnesota things. Yeah, we got moose here too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So chapter 45 is called The Tower Stands and the chapter symbol is the Flame of Tarvalin. And we enter in an Egwene perspective. And I was so happy because we ran last time. Yep. Or Nynaeve last time, actually, technically. Yes. But we were with <laughs> Rand through that whole thing. And I was like, oh, no. Are we What done? if we're left on a cliffhanger? Because yeah. there really feels like there's not much left, like, Physically, when you hold the book, mm -hmm. you're like, there's not much left in here. Yeah. Who are we going to get <laughs> caught up with? Where are we going to be left? And so we get Egwene, and I just got to, like, breathe a sigh of relief. I was like, okay, this is where we're learning. Like, I know. Yeah, I mean, we get two full chapters here, so, like, we get everything pretty much. Yeah. So we get a bit of a time jump, because when we left Egwene last time, it was the morning after the Shanshan attack, and she had just announced to the sitters... About all the Black Aja right. business that was happening. Yep. She swore on the oath rod and then she set forth her plan. Yes. We got Cherry M. We got Moria in that meeting. Yeah, we did. Got him. Yep. And then they brought up this whole plan of how we're going to capture them all. It's like, ah, oh, bring them in by Aja and then do the things and then trap them and then we'll get them. Yeah. And we don't have to see that. We don't have to see it. We get a r -r 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 rewind yeah. <laughs> update on how that went. How it went. It's pretty good. Yeah. It went medium. It went average to above average. I would say like a solid 7 out of 10. 
Well, is that because they got like 70%? <laughs> is is that how many they got? Well, they got 50 out of 70. Right. Okay. Around that. So is that, that's got to be roughly 70%. Okay. Take the <laughs> mental math time. We're both looking at each other like, yeah. I can't ha- carry the one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 71%. Yeah. Okay. Solid okay. 7 out of 10. It's funny how my brain kind of knows things that I don't even know that I know. Sure. Yeah. So about 70%. Okay. Yeah. And I would say that's average to above average. It's not superior. Oh, yeah. You're right. Like it's not it's excellent. Like a C. That's like a C. It depends what the grading scale is. Oh, you know, C's get degrees. It depends what the grading sa- scale is, though. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, after that, then the mission was by the afternoon, they'll be attacking Tarvalon. And it is, in fact, afternoon right now. Ooh, yes. Okay. Let's not gloss over the fact that they have caught 50 oh, yeah, Black okay. Aja sisters <laughs> in the rebel camp. We don't actually get that number till later this chapter. Oh, oh, am I jumping ahead? You are. Because at this I'm just point, too eager to talk at, about like it. the first page, it's like, ah, because Egwene has that thought of, ooh, I, I sentenced some sisters to be executed. Some, yeah. And it's like the implication is Sherriam and Moria, maybe. Yes. But we don't actually know exactly what's happened yet. And then okay. later we get the fact that they got 50 of them. Okay. And they chopped all the heads off. Yeah, all they, of them. They already did it. Chippity chop chop. They already yeah. did it. Stilled and executed. Done. Stilled and then executed. Let's talk about that later when it comes up. Okay. Let's talk about Egwene's color choices for the dress she's wearing. She's wearing red. Because? Of all the blood spilled. And, okay, it's kind of like in, you know, school with the English teachers. And they're like, what do you think the author meant when they chose the color red? What's the symbolism Mm -hmm, here? mm -hmm. What is it? Explain it. And you're like, uh, reunification Uh, of the red aja? And you're like, good, good, good. Mm -hmm. What else is the author meaning? Uh, blood blood it's like, okay good yes. good mm-hmm. <laughs> anything other than blood and the last one is division that needs to be fixed uh, question mark question mark. maybe okay okay anyway she chose red crimson crimson because apparently with colors as i'm learning as you color as you choose the colors for the paint in the house yes there are different shades of colors there are different shades of colors i had right. to pick the colors we we're gonna paint the cabinets you tried to explain the off shades the of difference between sh- the shades whites of, and the grays i chose linen good and it's like what yeah. the and you're like it's not eggshell and it's yeah. like oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> this brand believe. doesn't have eggshell i can't believe you're putting me through this <laughs> And by putting me through this, I mean, like, talking to me about it. You could pretend to care. I couldn't. Okay. Not for linen. Not for <laughs> not linen white. Linen color. Right. It's not real linen. I assumed we're not putting fabric no. on the... <laughs> okay, we have a cha- We have a chapter to go mm-hmm. through here. Yeah. All right. So everyone in the camp is just, like, scampering around, and there's some tension in the air because the Shanshan attack was just literally last night. Right. So don't forget that. And then Egwene returning to the camp and everything that caused was a, big a bunch deal. of yep. stuff. And she spent the morning, quote, cleansing the Aes Sedai. Right. Yeah. And then this is, we don't need to go very far. Yeah. Because this is where we learned that over 50 of the Black Aja in the camp have been stilled and immediately executed. But that also means that 20 somehow escaped. Right. Which is a big number to escape. It's a bit of a mystery. Bit of a mystery. We don't really know how that went down to. But we also get hidden in these first couple pages is how things went specifically for Sherry M. Mm. And we just got to... We got to highlight a little bit about it because we spent so much time in this series with Sherry M, seeing so much from her, and now she's a fi- she's dead, she's done, she's gone, she's gone, she's gone. Yeah. So she <laughs> seemed like relieved in Egwene's eyes that it was things were coming to an end, but then at the very end there, she was like struggling and trying to confess to some of her very disturbing crimes, and we don't get specifics on what Sherry M has done, but. We also get that Sherry might also have been considering that you don't get to necessarily escape the Dark One just because you die. Yes. Especially if you, like, pledge your soul to him. So Yes, and things, we know that. Yeah, we don't really know how things are going to go for her going forward, but, I mean, she's 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 gone. Yeah. So, so long, Sherry M. For now. Yeah. Until we see her at, like, a Dark Front social serving everybody with yeah. soulless <laughs> eyes. Like, yeah. I don't even know. Maybe. That's a good, that's a good one. I like that. I said that before. With, with Cherry M or? No, with... just with dark friends who die. Oh, yeah, they become, yeah. They become just literal servants. Right. Yeah. Right, okay. I've said that before. Okay. That's my theory. All Did right. you forget? Yes. How could you have forgotten that I, I said that one thing one time? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you could be making it up. I don't know. Nah, someone will fact check that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's keep plugging away here. Yes. 
So now we do get that some of the sitters, so like not the Black Aja ones, but like the other sitters, they were arguing that, no, we shouldn't execute all the Black Aja. We should interrogate, interrogate some of them. them. Yes. But Egwene insisted because she has learned her freaking lesson. And let me just say. I was going to ask, how do you feel about this? Freaking hallelujah. Okay. Thank you for learning a lesson. Positive. This is why we make mistakes. Yeah. Mistakes are good. If we learn from them. Right. Right? Right. And so here she's thinking about the situation that happened with Mogedian. It was great to learn a lot of things, but in the end, was it worth keeping a Forsaken alive? And the answer is no. Well, it's a big maybe. It's I don't know. It's definitely a no. And she's like, no. Well, Executed. It's like, what are these Black Aja going to teach us? That the Forsaken, you know, like there's well, definitely there's like a gap in knowledge here. Uh, something or other. Yeah. There's always a something. And Egwene says, no, I've yeah. learned my lesson. So we're positive about that. We're feeling good. Oh, yes. Cool. God, take these off like, the board here. Yeah. And you got to consider I'm like, not going to stop and think too long okay. <laughs> about 50 people dying. Right. But. Let's say that that's a big L for the shadow. Right before the last battle, losing 50 Black Aja, like just in the rebel camp. Just like the that's. Swimming. This morning, that's huge. Big deal. Huge numbers yeah. for losses. Complete disarray. You know who's going to pay for that? Probably Halima. Oh man, why? Because she was. It was like, Halima's job. Oh, to be here. To be here. Well, I mean, she had to stuff. get gone, right? So she anyways. did have to get gone, but she left them all vulnerable. That's true. That's true. Okay, now also good on the rebel camp, I guess, because they sorted out the warders, and we didn't just automatically execute the warders. So I guess that's a plus. Because they don't know the innocence oh, level yeah. of the warders. And because they don't have the whole, like, taking the oaths and lying, exactly. not lying ability. Yeah. Yeah. And we have the whole, like, with the warders, they're still going to go, even if they're innocent, because the Aes Sedai are dead now, they have that madness, the craziness. So Egwene's thinking, oh, like, at a later date, we might be able to sort it out. And if there are innocents here, let's hopefully keep them along, alive long enough to throw them into the last battle. And that's kind of where we stand on that right now. Uh -huh. Like, there's not a lot else we can do for the warders, unfortunately. Yeah. But maybe direct them towards, like, the good guys. Hey, go throw yourself into the blight. Yeah. Right? Or against the shadow. So. Or, unless they're dark friends. Unless they're dark friends, then probably heads chopped off. I would but how have to are we going to find that out? Um, That's a later problem. More challenging to find out. Yeah. But, okay, we're still taking this win. Right. Okay. Yeah, you gotta, got You gotta get that. So. All right. So now let's actually get into now times, because that was all the before times. Right. Things of, went well. The before times of this morning. Right. And now is the now times of this afternoon. Walking in the red dress. Yeah. Through the camp. Crimson. Yeah. So, <laughs> Lelaine <laughs> yeah. comes up to let Egwene know that Bryn is ready for the assault on the tower and lays out the basic plan. Basic and plan. Go across the bridges. Go, in. go across the bridges. And also gateways. Gateways. To get let's on the other side. In to get on the other side and like, let's use that to our advantage while we have it. Yes. And Egwene's like, yep, cool. I will personally make those gateways. And Lane is like her super lackey right now. Yeah. Well, her and Ramonda both fell in line. Mm hmm. Which yes. kind of makes sense because they're oh, like, yes. oh, dang, we just saw 50 Black Aja executed by you, basically. Yes. And. And we don't want to go against you. I don't well, want to go against wasn't you. Wasn't it Lelaine who was like, oh my God, I love Egwene. She's the best so much. Yes, because they're kind of, and Ramonda did that too. Let's not just point the finger. No, at... it was mostly Lelaine okay. though <laughs> but, that we heard of. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, hoping that she doesn't come back. And yeah. then it's like, oh, I'm basically her anyways. Yes. But now that Egwene's back, you got to fall in line. She's Plus, do it. heads rolling definitely helps with the listen to me. Literal side heads. Of things. Yes. That's how they did the executions. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. also as a side note, with Egwene saying, oh, I'll personally make the gateways, I want to put a bit of like an asterisk here too, because she doesn't want to bring the sisters into any form of the battle unless she absolutely has to. Aw, which I actually appreciate. Yeah, she is trying to like keep them out of it. This, this is up to the soldiers for now, unless the Aes Sedai and the tower start getting involved, then we'll get involved. Right. But like until that point, she doesn't want to really touch No, she touch almost that. wants to like keep their integrity. Yeah. Because she doesn't want any of the actual Aes Sedai to be attacking the White Tower. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's kind of her whole thing is she's like, I love the White Tower so much. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we got some side news here too. Okay. So Egwene asked for an update on the Black Tower because they sent some people there. If you no recall. information. No contact. Not not just like this no part makes nothing. me sad. Yeah. And upset. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it. Right. And I feel upset. Right. Yeah. Yep. 
and four of Egwene's specifically loyal followers all were in that group. The ones who yeah, Nassau pledged Morel, to her. Or... Theolaine, Theodrin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're mm-hmm. all in that group. And Egwene's like, oh, how do they all get selected for this envoy? Like, Was that Sherian? Yeah, but she didn't admit to that. So it could Was have, it a different dark friend? Could have been. There's a lot yeah. of them, right? Mm-hmm. So... Sounds that way because <laughs> it seems like yeah. Mazram Taim, not good guy. Apparently. Apparently it's looking like in that. In the end. Yeah. In the end, turned out. <laughs> not Maybe good not guy. the best guy. Not, not the worst definitely guy. Definitely not the best guy not with the worst that guy. red and black scheme. Right. Yeah. Okay. That See, I'm not going to decorate our house in red and black. Perfect. Because that would mean I'm a bad guy. Exactly. Everyone will walk in and be like, oh, bad clearly guy. evil. Clearly. Yeah. Obvious. Uh, so obvious. <laughs> and also, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No time for that now. Right. Yes. There's other news. You mean the other problem? I mean, you can call it a problem if you want to. All of the dream terrangrial are gone? Yeah. <laughs> because Sharia managed to actually get rid of all of them? She just checked them out. She just said, give me them all. Yeah. And then people did. Yep. Yeah. And there was no backup plan because that was the whole point is like, how is she going to seek them out? Turns out she was really frantic, didn't come up with a plan and then just check them out. And yeah. now it doesn't matter because I guess she's dead and she already handed them over. Yes. But at the time, it's like, what was her game plan after this? She didn't have one. She had no nope. game plan. No, no, no. She just didn't want to lose any more digits. And she lost one because Swan mm-hmm. tucked one away. Mm-hmm. Right. Or was it Liana? Like one of them had Ooh, one. Yeah. So th- no, I think it was Swan. I can't remember. Anyways, there's one. I don't remember either. She did lose a finger. She had it wrapped up, right? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And she didn't sneakily air weave it underneath the canvas of the That did not happen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So all all of them are gone. And that was one of her confessions. Right. Was about the Terangriel. So that's not good. Oh, no. And she handed them over to... The person in the tower who is a forsaken, but we don't know who. Ah. Yeah, so close. We almost figured it out who it is. No, we're never going to know, probably. Yeah. I've already just like conceded you to that. Give up? Okay. I won't even care. Doesn't even matter. When it's released, when I get to know who it actually is, yeah. I won't even care. You're, you're going to be like, ugh, so obvious. Will I? Yeah, you'd be like, ugh. Or I'll be should, like, I who's that? I totally could have. I should have known that. Will I? Yeah. You think? Yeah. Okay. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's like... The but the l- problem is it's so anticlimactic now because I was so invested right. in whatever book that was, like a book or two ago. Yeah. And I really wanted to know. that. I think that was Crossroads. I was like, ooh, that would have been a good thing to throw in. Yeah. In Crossroads to give me something. And now I've lost interest. Okay. I don't care as much. All right. I'm going to give I'm gonna give you a hint before the chapter ends. Okay. Let's ooh, just, you're going to yeah. give me a hint. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. okay. But now, because Sheriam confessed that a Forsaken is in the White Tower, which Egwene actually already knows because yep. of Varen's notes, yep. and that's who Sheriam gave the Terangriel to. Right. But now they're thinking that with the assault on the tower and everything and the return of the rebels to the tower, there's a good chance the Forsaken will have just slipped away in the confusion. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? So why? How are we feeling? Why is that the conclusion we came to? Like, I... why? Are, why are we assuming that the Forsaken is going to slip away at this point? Unless it's Mogedian. Yeah. The answer is not. Well, and I mean, we know it's not. We know it's Masana. Yeah. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 So okay, maybe. And I was trying to think about this too. Like, why is this the assumption? If we have twenty Black Aja who escaped, news has to have gotten out somehow about something going down in the rebel camp. And if there is the implication that they're going around with the oath rod to try and figure out who's Black Aja, maybe it would be prudent for even a Forsaken to not get caught up in that kind of shenanigans, right? Like maybe it does make sense that Masana will slip away because she doesn't want to be put in a situation where she has to swear on an oath rod now. And like, she doesn't have a, like, presumably she didn't swear on the oath rod, right? <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to think of that logic. Maybe there is some reason behind them thinking she won't be in the tower. I don't know. It just seems like a whim. Yeah. That they're going off of. It's like not a good bet to make necessarily. Anyways. Yeah, well. Okay. I guess we'll we'll see. See how that goes. Yeah. Okay. Know who else is here? Following at a respectful distance behind Egwene. Following at a respectful distance. (laughs) 
yeah, behind Egwene who's walking <laughs> with Lilane and no, okay, it's Gawain. Gawain's is it Gawain? Here. Gawain's okay, here. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's a, okay, because, because you're doing like a walk and talk here and <laughs> with Lilane and Ramonda, right? Yeah, yeah, and then Gawain's just Gawain's behind like him. a little, yeah, he's like okay. here still, and Good. she's like, ugh, I still don't know what to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, because right. he comes up very briefly later on, too. Well, okay, so they are, at one point, they get on horses. Yeah, they do. Too. They're riding, I just have in my notes, they're riding through the camp, and I was like, oh, when did that happen? Well, because, like, they walk from where yeah. her to, and to, the, to the edge of the <laughs> army camp, and, like, there's no army here. I track of yeah. notes here. Okay. They're, they're walking, talking. Yeah. Be- and they go to the soldier camp, and there's no soldiers, because they're we're all getting ready oh, yeah, for this battle. Oh, yeah, we're getting battle. ready like, to go. We're going to go attack and Tarvalin. And we've been ready to get gone at a moment's notice. Exactly. For months. For months. And yep. Bryn's like, yeah, we can do this go now. Go time. It's go so time. So then they get a horse and then they ride to one of the villages because they're going to attack from the west and whatever. Kay. Like basically the plan is go across the bridges right now. So then we get to the back of the army and that's where we can kind of pick up with Egwene seeing Bryn and Swan together. Okay. And she's like, huh, those two, huh? Yeah. Weird. Immediately picks up on it. Yeah. She's like, oh. You're a warder. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when oh, did that happen? You're together yeah. and good Good for you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you know what? Egwene's still not happy with Swan. She's not letting her off the hook um, here. I think that she's doing what she thinks she should do Yeah. in this situation. Yeah. Like there's no heat to it? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Because I think that she's probably like, ugh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm disappointed. Just disappointed. Yeah. yeah. But like, and now- it's actually turned out for an okay time. Yeah. So it's all going pretty well for her right now. Yeah. So. She's just like, uh, don't disregard my orders again, okay? Yeah. Uh, Bryn, maybe you should let her work in the army because she should learn how to follow orders. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah. It's just like <laughs> okay. it's just like little side slights. Like I yeah. don't think she act. It, Oh, yeah, good cares. luck keeping her out of trouble, Gareth Bryn, because she doesn't listen to anybody. Yeah. She doesn't play by anybody's <laughs> rules, not, her, not even her own. It's like, okay. all right. And then she also pulls for on Swan. She's like, uh. I haven't decided what to do with you yet, <laughs> rule breaker. I like how all my Egwene impressions right now are starting with, uh. Uh. <laughs> uh little comment. Uh, little comment. Yeah. <laughs> but she's not even angry anymore. I'm not angry. Uh. <laughs> She just needs trust to be earned. Yeah, you earned gotta back. earn the trust back. You don't yeah. have the trust back yet. You gotta earn it. You gotta <laughs> gotta work for it. Okay, that summarizes that. That's good. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> okay, but now Bryn wants Egwene to see something super weird. Right. And so they're gonna ride over to look at the force guarding the White Tower. Yeah. Now they're still on the bank, like yeah. across the river. Yeah. And there's a big bridge, right? And there's a big bridge, but they can see yeah. the forest guarding the White Tower from where yeah. they are. Because they have about 300 people block- like blockading the bridge. And they can see maybe about another 700-ish on the tower walls by this gate. So there's about 1,000 people guarding this gate. And the weird part is that Bryn has like 10,000 versus yeah. the 1,000 that are barricading the White Tower. Okay. And that's weird because Bryn's like, hey... The tower should be able to have more people than this. And even if they were like cleaning up rubble from last night, once they saw us come here, they should have moved more people here. And they did not. And they didn't. And this is weird now because basically if we this attack, is gonna be a slaughter. we're going to steamroll them. Yeah. Especially with gateways and stuff. So then it's like, okay, well, what's actually, is this some sort of trap? Like, yeah, it's what's a trick. going on? Egwene starts kind of second guessing things. She starts hesitating because she's like, okay, well, like, you know, is this still a good idea to do this attack? Well, and Egwene doesn't feel good about any of this. No, she doesn't and want to attack. she really, really thinks that a lot of people are going to die today. Like, yeah. that goes on and on and on. Yeah. A while. She's never really, like, Rand had this issue too. The first couple of times he had to order... Like, battles. Battle, yeah. Because there is that personal... And same with Matt. Like, it's the personal responsibility of your commanding people to go and die. Yeah. Elaine, she's been cool with it the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. She's like, yeah, that's what they're here she for. She wants to put herself in the middle of it every time. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, those people are loyal followers. They're supposed to die for me. Anyways, and Egwene's uh-huh. like, oh, no, I uh... really don't want this to happen. <laughs> but then Bryn basically says, well, at this point, like, traveling exists we either need to do this thing or we need to pack up and go home yeah like that this that's it we can't like there's no more siege like warfare like we, we're done like yeah do it or don't do it 
So and she's then like, Egwene <laughs> is like, hmm, yeah. okay, I will do it, but yeah. how about in an hour? We'll wait now? one hour. One hour. Not a hard hour. No. Like a soft hour. Like a soft hour. Yeah. Just until we have to ultimately attack. Yeah, because then he's like, if we wait long, it's like too dark. You shouldn't do the No, because then we attacks. lose a lot of advantage when we're fighting in the dark. Yeah, and a lot of things. Like, there's a lot okay. of reasons not to do so, that. So, listen. Okay. We wait for an hour. And even a little bit more. A loose hour. <laughs> hour and then Egwene is half. still hesitating, <laughs> yeah. but then just at the last dramatic moment. When she turns her head, she turns the her most head to order it. Dramatic yeah. battle ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's like literally turning it's her such head a moment. to say, okay, attack. Or yeah. Something. Whatever you and say. And then Bryn says, what's this? And they can see a procession coming I'm pretty from sure, the I'm pretty the sure he tower. says, ahoy, hoy, what's this now? Or something yeah. like that. <laughs> It's like phrase super weird. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. I want to look it up now because I didn't write it down, but yeah. That hold on. stood out in your brain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, things like that. <laughs> it's always funny when that stands out. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that funny. He says, here now. What is this? Here now. Here now. Okay. Uh, okay. I like ahoy, hoy ahoy, better. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> <laughs> but here now isn't exactly the way people speak, so no. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I cut you anyway, off. There's a procession. There's a whole procession coming. Yeah. <laughs> and it isn't soldiers. It's Aes Sedai. Can you believe it? Oh, my God. Who, who's leading the pack? What color dress is she wearing? Oh, my God. It's the best negotiator <laughs> in town. <laughs> She's so good at negotiating this. She's here Do to negotiate. Do you see how she gives Egwene everything she wants? Uh-huh. That's negotiating, baby. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So, and Daya, yeah. this is someone we know. We, or at least I recognize the name. Yeah. We've seen her. She's a sitter. Okay. She uses a weave to project her voice and yells, We want to talk to Egwene. <laughs> is she here now? Is she here? And then yeah. Egwene is back. I'm here. Yeah. Like, but she wants to see the rest of you. Oh, yeah. Who else is there? And then they all listen and they all come out. There's First nine step, other yeah. sitters. First step to negotiating, give them everything they want. Yeah. Right? Well, and there's no blues this here. This isn't negotiating. There's no blues. There's no reds. No blues, no reds. It's notable. Kay. Blues make sense. Reds also make sense. Yeah. And Egwene says, okay, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and then Endaya says, we've come to inform you that the Hall of the White Tower has chosen to raise you to the Amaralyn seat. Hooray! Oh. Oh, excellent. <sighs> yes. Yeah. And Egwene's like, is this some kind of trap? Right. Sounds like well, a trap. She's, she's a lot more snarky. It's like, what happened to Elida? Did you depose another Amerlin? It's like, hey, hold up here. Just like, that's what you want. Yeah, but she's understandably a little skeptical. Yeah, but like if they said, yes, we deposed her, that's what you, that's the plan. That's yeah, but, been the plan. Yeah, but that's what she wanted to hear. Yeah. She is concerned. Where's Elida? Yeah. How's Elida going to take this news? That was always the whole thing. Yes, she wanted her deposed, but like, yeah. then what? Where well, is she? Guess what? Dave's not here, man. She, she gone. Well, she's not here. Not, she she's gone. Not here. Yeah. Man, yeah. What do you mean she's gone? <laughs> she got taken in the raid last night, presumed dead. And you know what? Egwene says. Hold on. Hold on. The best part of that. They said she's not able to fulfill her duties as Amerlin. Yeah. At the very least. But like she wasn't fulfilling her duties as Amerlin mm -hmm. for the past mm -hmm. like how many months? Yeah. At least. Yeah. And then Swan's like, ha, deserves it. <laughs> yeah. But then Egwene yeah. says nobody deserves that better she was dead yeah and that's what i said yeah so okay all right and Bryn thinks that this all might be a trap and swan's like well and Daya can't exactly lie and they're being very clear right now yeah there's no wishy-washiness in the verbiage here no and also Egwene confirms that and is not on the list of black aja so like technically we could miss her but yeah. the chances that all of this is and, and like we know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we know they decided to make her Amarly. Yes, we do. We saw that meeting. So Egwene's good with it. Yeah. And she's like, are you going to let the army come in? Yeah. <laughs> also, Blue Aja gets to come back. And they're like, yeah, we anticipated that. And yeah. for show. Yes. You could come in for show. Yes. Please okay. come. Please come be the Amarly. <laughs> Nobody here wants that job. And Egwene says, I accept. Yeah. Swan still and thinks Swan's it's rash. Like, That's but rash. And it's like, listen, lady. Listen, lady, this was the plan. This was this the plan was all it. along, and now there's no need for bloodshed. Yeah, no more. No more dragging this out. No. We're riding in. We're doing this. Okay. We're doing it. No battle today, yes. sisters. We did it. 
And Sisters are doing it for themselves. Right. We are family. <laughs> okay. So many things. Hooray. 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 Okay. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Okay. Well, we almost finished doing it. We have we one more chapter. We got, we got things yeah. to do. We got boobs to show. I'm glad you picked up on that. Oh, my God. Spoiler. Was... Spoiler I for know. the next chapter. And you're going to hear my displeasure. Okay. Next chapter. Okay. All right. So let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So we're back and we are going to jump into chapter 46. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you were going to talk about it though, because like yeah. the whole Masana, I was going to give you Masana hint. My, a Masana hint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You- so if you take all the letters in Masana in her name and you rearrange them. Mm, no. You come up with the word Seaman. Uh-huh. And then if you rearrange the letters in Masana's real name, yeah. you get Tom Marvolo Riddle. Oh, oh no. No, nothing? Okay. That's a bad hint. Yeah, it was a bad joke. Do <laughs> you just want a drink? A little bit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's all I had. I had the first one for the Lord of the Rings, but you know. Oh, I was trying to... that's so bad. If okay. anything, I was going to say that the whole projecting your voice is a spell in Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. The Quidditch well, World Cup. So here's the thing. I was using the internet, as you as you do, yeah. to come up with anagrams for... Oh, you actually like planned oh. that joke? Well, no, but this is the problem. It, it, there's a lot of letters in her real jokes. name. And then it came up with like some ideas like, oh, you can spell the word randiness out of... Her full name, her real like her Age of name? Legends name, but like leaving oh, out a couple Masana's. letters. I thought you Masana's meant... like her. No, no, no. I thought you were gonna give me the letters in the name of the sister. Oh yeah. Who she... and then I could figure it out. No, no. Why would I? I'm I not th- gonna give you a real hint. No, it was uh... never gonna be real. What do you think this is? Randiness. I don't know. It didn't even use all the letters either. So the internet really failed me on this one. And mostly I just, you know. Okay. You can take a shot. Okay. Okay. And you have a purple drink because you made a new one. I'm going to take a sip of it. Okay. This is made with the Empress Gin. May she live forever. All right. Not even talking about Shaunshin in this chapter. Well, we did a little. Okay. Here's to Danny figuring out who Masana is or maybe is not at some point. And who cares? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To you. Clink. Clink. <laughs> You're too far away from me. <laughs> and I don't have a shot glass. <laughs> that was good. Okay. I enjoyed it. Okay. You know, I'm feeling a little less stuffy. That's good. Okay. Do I sound less stuffy? No. Oh. But let's do this chapter and use a lot of blacksmith metaphors. Oh. Channel the inner parent. Yes. Chapter 46. To be forged again. As you would with a sword. A new. Right. As or... you would with metals and such <laughs> in yeah. a smithy. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> well, the chapter symbols, the wheel and snake. Right. You know, as you do. As you do. Now, we're going to remain in our Egwene perspective. Right. No switchy swatchies over here. No. No. But we get a lot of details here. Okay. Egwene. Crosses the bridge into Tarvalin, and the day has been a bit of a blur for her. So much, so much. Rushed into the White Tower. Servants here, rooms there. Everybody's Sinners waiting. Are all waiting. They're waiting for her because she's got to be like addressed and raised mm-hmm. to the Amerlin yes. in the White Tower and yes. such and such. Mm-hmm. But first, we need to learn how to do this because she's only done it once before. And it was weird the first time she did it, and she didn't even really know what was going on. And she super cared yeah. for tradition back then, and now she cares less. Now she's like, I don't give a what. I don't care if I <laughs> mess up or not. I'm the Amerlin, bitch. And it's a lot more <laughs> grand here because like there's an actual tower. Except <laughs> when we do go in, there's a big hole in the side of the room yeah but it's super cinema t- cinematograph it'd be really good on tv <laughs> it's really cool cinematic C- maybe maybe that's the word okay but first before we get there we need swan to be like no she doesn't need to be raised to amerlin she already is amerlin <sighs> but then Egwene makes Egwene's the point like no i actually do yeah this hall didn't raise me right a different one did we got to give him a chance to Speak. We got to give them yeah. a chance to say, yes, we like you and want you as our leader. And or Egwene needs that. Or no, wash my feet first and then I'll think about oh, it. Oh, right. I forgot about that piece. Right. Yeah. Now, we also learn Egwene's plan for all of the rebel Aes Sedai. Yeah. I need your opinion on this on what you think, because Swan at first does not care for it. It sounds like. I like it. Okay. Let's explain the plan. I think it's very diplomatic. Explain the plan. 
So off the top of my head, because I didn't write it down. <laughs> okay, okay. But what did you? What do you think the plan is? Okay, so the rebel Aes Sedai yeah. have to line up. Yep. In their Ajaz. Sure. That's and the they're like le- groups and stuff. Yeah, that's the not important part of that. And then to be let into the tower, they have to apologize. Yeah. For splitting from the tower. Right. And then Egwene is going to say, I accept your apology. Come on in. That's basically what it is. And they will be washed of their sins. Exactly. Yeah. And then Swan's like, what do you mean apologize? And Egwene's like, well, they shouldn't have rebelled. Yeah. That's not allowed. <laughs> and, you know, from Swan's perspective, let's not forget Swan was the Amaralyn seat yeah. who was deposed relatively unlawfully. 100% unlawfully. 100% unlawfully. 100% unlawfully. And then stilled and kept in a And her cell, warder was murdered. And her warder was murdered. Uh-huh. And so everybody who left was on Swan's side. Yeah, basically. In her mind, you know? Yeah. And it's like they didn't stand for what happened. Yeah. And they should be commended for it. Right. And so to have to apologize for being upset about what happened to Swan. Yeah. And the tower, you know, in... It's tough. It's a tough situation. Everything. But Egwene has a very good point. Good point. She is the Amaralyn of everybody, not just the rebels. And they went against the tower law. Yep. Do you want an office reference here? Sure. This is always. like when you go and start the Michael Scott paper company oh, and then you come back yeah. to the office. Mm. You can't maintain your relationship with just Pam and Ryan. Can't you, do it. You have to. That makes encapsul- everybody upset. You've got to get everybody back on board. When mm. you bought out Michael Scott paper company, that means you bought the leads. You got to give the clients back to the salespeople. You got to do you it. You got to do it. You can't. You can't do you can't do what you did, you can't know? Can't do what you did. Okay. I got it. I hope I understand. I hope everybody understands what I mean by that. I do, actually. Okay. Surprisingly, I understand. <laughs> okay, well that's that's what's happening. So they got to say sorry and yeah. they can come back in. Okay. So now let's go because they're the gong rings or whatever cuz now we're going standing gong, at the door. Gong, it's gong. time to be raised. Yeah. And then she goes in and, then, and No, no, no. First, oh, wait, <laughs> Gawain's hanging out like he wants to come in and she's like, Haha, "Idiot, of course you can't come." You can't come to this meeting, Gawain. Yeah. You're not part of this. Leave me alone. Go home. <laughs> you don't even go here. Yeah. <laughs> And like he doesn't, no. he doesn't go here. Go to Camelin. He doesn't Your go here. Really freaking needs you. You're not a warder. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't belong here, Gawain. No, and at one point I think he says like, "I want to be your warder" or like something. Yeah, he said that a couple chapters ago. He's like, "No, no." He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna be," and yeah. also maybe your husband. Like it's weird. It's a weird relationship. Yeah. And she's like, "Eh." Anyways, okay. he can't come in. Can't come in. And he looked like he was going to say something, but then he just like stands and bows and Egwene's like, ugh, that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. Okay. okay. Yeah. So. Cinematographical. Very cool. Cinematographic. Because she walks cinematographic. in. Cinematographic. It, it is terrific. Cinematographic. Yes. She walks into the big hall. Yeah. And there's a hole blasted through the wall. Yeah. But she thinks about her accepted test when she was in a similar position. Mm-hmm. And but she swore, I'm right about except that Except she too. swore on the oath rod in this, in reality. She has been sworn <sighs> on the oath rod now. I know. Right? But she, did she do that. was the Amarlin seat to the rebels and to a lot of people in the tower before she ever did that too. Totes true. Also. Totes true. Also. Yeah. Bonus half points. Yeah. Okay. Totes true. So... The hole in the wall is blasted, and the Amaralyn seat is like right in front of the hole. And through the hole, you can see Dragon Mount. Oh, it's my like, gosh. oh, so cool! Cinematographic, 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 cinematographic. That's where the word comes from, I think. From I think so, yeah, okay. Yeah. And the Look seat, it up. the seat itself is not damaged. Oh, whoa, come on, okay, that can't be by chance, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> part of the pattern, it's fate. Oh, uh, oh, my goodness, okay, anyways, okay. Now, let's, let's do the ceremony. Right. Okay. Boobs aren't out yet, I don't think. No. Not quite yet. But they really breeze over when the ceremony actually starts. Yeah, maybe the boobs are out. I can't remember when the boobs come the out. The boobs come out really early on. Yeah. Because you have to prove you're a woman. Right. And I prefer the testicle chair. Me too. I think we all do. I think yeah. we all prefer the that Pope chair. The testicle chair, right? Yeah. Or the vicars or someone. I think so. Has to show their testicles because... In all honesty, a really trustworthy innkeeper sure. could probably pass for a woman via this <laughs> test. 
<laughs> it's not the most most accurate. I I get what you're saying. I just had to say, there's all different kinds of boobs out yeah, there. Fair, fair. You there's know what? There's all different kinds of boobs. Okay, we admit this is not the best test, but it's part of their ceremony. Therefore, we must never give it up. Okay. All right. So okay. now, Can now I there's show the you words. Something? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. So you know how in my book here I had rebel camp sitters. Yeah. And I had white tower sitters. Right. So I've started a new page. Okay. And it's the new white tower sitters page. Good. But what do you notice about it? It's blank. There's nothing there. Well, not well, the colors of the blank. Ajas. Yeah. Yeah, you spelled Sylviana wrong, I think. Oh my god! <laughs> you don't have to, I don't even know how to spell these names. That's hardly the point There's here. There's one name, and it's Sylviana, and it's spelled wrong. Well, that's just I have the new keeper down here. Now you're spoiling things. <laughs> oh my I goodness. need you to, to just say it's empty. It's empty because sure. I don't know. Who's officially a sitter now and who's not. That's the point of this chapter. I know. Is that we don't know. I know. So, yet to be filled in. Okay. I just am saying. Yeah. I tried to do some homework and then I was like, oh, wait. It's real good homework you did there. Well, I'm set up <laughs> for when we do learn. Preemptively did the future homework. Yes. Yeah. I like that. That's better. And I wrote New Keeper. And I don't think I spelled it wrong. You did. It's not, there's no Y in her name. There's no Y in Sylviana? No. Because I had a Y in it over here on well, this page. Well, it was page. wrong then, too. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. If anyone's wondering, you put it at the beginning, S-Y. Yeah. Yeah. Like Sylvester. Sure. That's, I think, probably what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, let's All get right. back to it. Back to it. Okay. We're doing the ceremony. There's okay. words. Sarin is here. Yeah. We know her. Yep. And then we've got, who comes before the hall of the tower? Blah, blah, blah. blah Egwene's blah, not listening. Blah, blah, blah. She's distracted because she's looking at how many there's people are no here. There's no reds here. Well, yeah. And, like, that makes and sense. And there's only, like, two of one and one of the other. and There's 11. Total. Yeah, there's, there's 11 here. And it's not enough to raise an Amaralyn by the old laws, but since they've been revised because the blues don't exist anymore in the tower. Saren's still trying to do the ceremony. She's trying. Yeah. And then we got Tessin here who's, like, trying to who's tell Tessin? so she is Is that the little brown who's who's saying all the stuff before? no that was a different one this oh. is the i think she's white aja and she's like trying to prompt Egwene with the lines to continue with the ceremony because mm. it looks like Egwene just forgot what she's supposed to say mm. but Egwene's not forgetting what she's supposed to no. she's she's like oh man where are the reds yeah and then where are they yeah, he's like, well, don't have to worry about them. Don't worry about them. They're not here right now. <laughs> They've all retreated to their quarters after Elida's disappearance, and they are worried that you hate them all. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they're not here. They're not here. And assuming that Egwene also doesn't want them here, that's kind of the, the issue here, too. Mm-hmm. So now we get some names of people who are not here right now. Names of people who aren't here. That's mm -hmm. a new one. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so we've got Talene, who fled weeks ago. Oh, I see. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, she okay. was the one who was caught by the Black Aja Hunters. Yes. She got away. Okay. Which is like, how? Number one. Yep. The Black Aja Hunters literally finally caught a Black Aja. <sighs> yeah. Now she's gone. Gone. Okay. The Greys are missing Aveneline, who vanished earlier in the day. Super suspicious. Well, okay. Uh, it's probably important to note there was a that shot attack. <laughs> 20 yeah. Black Ajas did get away. From the rebel camp. From the rebel camp. I'm not talking about the tower and either. And it's likely now there has been some sort of message system in place. Possibly. For the rest of the Black Aja. Yeah. And then we've got two who are on Varen's list who are also gone. So then it's like, oh, does that mean this one who mysteriously disappeared also is Black Aja? So now we're in like this weird middle ground. But then we do know that Duhara left. She's one of the Reds. She left the tower on a mission for Elida. She's Black Aja. She's the one who got sent to Camelin to go and be like Elaine's advisor. Oh. And Elaine was like up yours. Yeah. Fuck because you. like, yeah, no. I remember. Yeah. So she's Black Aja. And then we've got the other two, Red Javindra and Pavara. Who are all captured at the, at the Black Tower Black right Tower. now. So not so good. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the part where Egwene asks about Sylviana. Yeah. Where is she? Right. Is she still being held captive? Mm-hmm. Yes, she is. Well, go get her. Yes. It's important that she's here for the ceremony, too. Yes. Yeah. So now we get the finishing of the Amarillin ceremony. Boobs out and everything. Right. And then we get a bunch of Egwene thoughts 
on how she feels about everything. Mm-hmm. She feeling pretty good. She's feeling great. Yeah, confident. I'm experienced. I hopefully I'm wiser. Yeah, you know, to an extent. Yeah. And it's finally time for the hall to stand in support of her and all 11 sitters stand, which is not surprising to Egwene. And that means she does not have to wash anyone's feet and convince them yeah. that she should be Amarlin. Which, which I mean, is there, is, there is a power move to that power too. Power move. Where if you don't power stand up, move. you make her wash her feet. And you're like, mm, okay, I guess I'll stand for you. Could have happened, but didn't. But Egwene's pretty sure that all these ladies... Just want someone to take control. At this point, yeah. At this, like, oh, please be yeah. in charge. <laughs> and then Saren comes up and puts the Amarlin stole on Egwene. And this one is the original one with all seven colors. Yeah, someone stowed it away. So that's good. And she asks Egwene quietly, are you sure you want to do this? And Egwene is like, I already do this. She's like, I'm the most humble. Yeah. <laughs> and I already bear the weight of everything and I'll do it to the death and such and such. And such and such. And then Siren announces her as the Amarlin seat. We did it. Hooray. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Like, all in all, like, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Yeah. It's what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And all in all, after everything that happened, it was a pretty smooth transition. Relatively. Like, relatively. There was no battle, no war. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't actually have to break the tower more and to fix it. And we didn't have to deal with Elida in any way, shape, or form. Right. So that's probably the cleanest it could have been. Yeah. Because if they had to deal with Elida and then also get Egwene in, right. that would have been messy. Yeah. And, like, the only part I really don't like about this is the fact that the... The people in charge here, the White Tower, they didn't solve their own problem. No. They very much so didn't come up with a solution no, to the Elida not. issue. No, no, no. It had to come from the Shanshan for them to actually do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a win. And Egwene is going to voice that opinion. <laughs> okay. So she turns and faces the sitters at this point because now officially she's Amerlin. Right. And also Sylviana showed up at some point. She's here. Okay. Or she gets brought in no, like no, right no. now. No, no, She's not here yet. Yeah. She gets brought in in a yeah. minute. She's... In chains. Yeah. You're jumping way ahead. What are you doing? So dramatic. Okay. So first though, before that happens, Egwene turns and faces the sitters and they all take turns approaching Egwene and curtsying and kissing the ring and blah, blah, blah. Oh, right. And then that's when Sylviana is brought in. Yeah. And Egwene orders her to be released and tells her to approach. Yeah. And now the sitters are all confused because this isn't part of the ceremony. And Yukiri is like, uh, is this the best time to be dispensing judgment? Yeah, they think that, and it's just happened a couple of times already. There's a few comments where like, uh, should we really be bringing Sylviana in right now? Because like your little squabble can wait to a later time because you yeah. clearly want vengeance on her. Clearly, because for... of all the beatings. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all the beatings. A lot of them. And instead of answering the question, Egwene just looks at all of them and then just starts absolutely ripping in to all of them. Oh, yeah. It's And she's it's like, <laughs> you should all be ashamed. You're responsible for this. All of it. And the division of the tower and the tower splitting in the first place. You're a disgrace. Elida was a freaking crazy maniac and you all knew it. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. like, keeps going on. And she's making some, like, really good points that yeah. I want to mention here. Yeah. Because she says, like, you guys are supposed to be a check on the power of the crazy Amerlin. You're not supposed to just let her do whatever, you, like, she wants to. That's the to. reason you exist, That's why Paul. you exist. Yeah. Like, hello. Yeah. Hello. And you just let her get rid of the blues and you let her do the thing to try to capture Rand. And there were so many opportunities to try to take her out of power. And you just did nothing. And then, like, the other 50 things that she did that she shouldn't have done. There's so many. And, like, yeah. nobody wanted to face any consequences. So you just, you sat on your hands. You did nothing. Yeah. So shame. Shame on you. Shame. 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 Okay. But you know who did stand up to defy Elida? Even though there was punishments to be had after that? Sylviana. Sylviana. With an I. Sylviana. Not a Y. With, you could say with two eyes. With double eyes. Not in the, not in a row. <laughs> just in the, in the name. <laughs> no Ys. No Ys. Okay. I think it would be better with a Y. Nah. I like okay. the way I wrote it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Sylviana did a great job and she stood up to Elida because Sylviana did. She like yelled at Elida. Yes, she did. And that's why she got imprisoned. And Egwene legitimately respected Sylviana this whole time. She's the only one who did her job. Yeah. 
And, you know, I would, her. I would put an asterisk to that, too. Because even with the whole standing up to Elida thing, like, it took a while. Mm-hmm. It took a while for even Selviana to get there. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess if she we're giving up points, did. she still did it. So And, but to Egwene's credit, this actually makes a lot of sense because she's going to need the support of the Reds. Yeah. And yeah, so it's super logical. She thinks to herself, what better way to do that than make my keeper of the chronicles from the red aja right it's solid super and solid as like the former mistress of novices who like was beating you yeah like it, it's a pretty good swing it's a good move yeah and sylviana and the rest of them are super surprised yeah it's pretty shocking yeah everyone expects because that's what they would do with that situation and take a little bit of justice and vengeance yeah but Finally, Sylviana says, I would be honored, mother. Yeah. Now, okay, so Sylviana still definitely has some, like, red viewpoints and red leanings, especially about male channelers. So, Egwene does think, like, okay, we're going to have to, like, work on that Mm -hmm. because the reds need to come up with a new job. You can't just have the same old job. Like, recruitment. Gotta have a new job. Yeah. (laughs) Different job. Maybe recruitment. Maybe. We'll... we'll... Hey, what about recruitment, maybe? We'll see. Okay. Really? (laughs) Maybe? Okay. What do you think about Sylviana becoming the keeper for Egwene? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. You know, he's not going to be happy. Elaine and Ramonda going to be very upset. Oh, who cares? I'm just saying. Just saying. No, it had to not be someone from the rebel camp. Right. Yeah. She does make that comparison too. It's like, hey, if I'm going to be a rebel Amerlin, yeah. then like a loyalist keeper yes. is a good balance. Yeah. Yeah. Same with getting a red keeper. And I would say that she's probably going to piss some blues off in doing that. Maybe. But. Maybe. It's better to have support of the Red Aja at this point, I think. Yeah, there's more of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there's there's reasons. Well, and I think that in all of this, coming back in from the rebel side of things, mm-hmm. in order to keep unity, which is what she wants, I think that this, in fact, was a good move. Yeah. You can't box out the Reds completely. You can't take, like, a blue as a keeper and just, yeah. like, completely box out the Reds. That doesn't make... That's and the Michael Scott Paper Company all, all over again. Of all the Reds that we know, and I mean, I don't know too much about Sylviana. Sure. But realistically, she seems not as... Sure. Bad? Yeah, not I get that. crazy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's kind of like the Pavar. Pavar was also kind of cool. Pavar also was kind of cool. Like, as you know, a red. we got tendencies, but we're also willing to, like, look at new ways. And we get that from Selviana in the walk and talk because we're going to also have that happening because we have to go do, like, a little presentation to everybody right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. But before we do that. Like a presentation to the rebels, you mean? To every, yeah, exactly. We got to do that. But first, we got to do a few things. Number one, we got to have Egwene say, okay, also, like, I get that I'm also partially to blame for all this stuff, but we all sucked in this last couple of months here with the split and all that. Like, this was bad for everybody. We all did a bad job, and we all have to heal together now. Yeah. So let's go talk to the rebels. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do this thing. So this is where we get a walk and talk between Egwene and Sylviana as her first little, like, hey, you're Amarillan on Keeper. Oh, and Sylviana said, I'm assuming you have a Keeper with the Rebels. What's your plan for that? <laughs> yeah. And Egwene's like, oh, I chopped her head off. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. She was Black Eyed Joe. We killed her. <laughs> Uh, and then also it's like oh by the way and i also had a meeting with one of the black aja members while i was here and she was totally giving me all the names of a bunch of other black aja so like we got to deal with that yeah and also and also maybe i have the oath rod i also have the oath rod yeah but also let's not keep all of our tarangrel and ang let's not just keep them in one place unguarded yeah we gotta probably do better with we gotta do better with the whole like security lots of things and then sylviana's like all right well i guess i'm gonna (laughs) have to get used to things changing around here yeah and we're gonna need a new mistress of novices yeah because we got hundreds of recruits i know who it's gonna be oh who can we have a mistress of novices who's also a novice herself oh um what's your name the old old lady old lady yeah no, Old I don't. Lady I McGee. don't. I don't what? think we can okay, do now that. Now I need to look. Sharina. Sharina Malloy. Yeah. Old and strong. That's what I wrote in here. But the current <laughs> mistress of novices in the rebel camp is Tiana something yeah. or other. I don't think you can have a novice as the mistress of novices. I know. Mm. We. I know we like Sharina, but I like is that? I don't think that's allowed. I think you need a nice to die to be. You know. Uh, why, I, I like though? where you're. I, why though? She's so good. Yeah. 
Like, I agree Why with you. Why can't you have a leader among the people? Hmm. No. That's oh. too much change. Okay, well, then it'll probably be Tiana. They'll probably, oh, they just probably keep sailing. They'll keep yeah. the mistress of novices from the rebel camp, because there has to be some integration. Okay. I get that. I get that. I don't even know. I only have that in my notes right here. Tiana. I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Well, she's the mistress of novices in the rebel camp. Right. <laughs> you just said it. And she's doing an okay job. At least okay. Sharina is like her number two, right? Like, is that oh, a thing? for sure. That could be the, uh, that could be the yes. position. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Egwene is like, yes, we're going to need a new mistress of novices who can handle so many recruits. Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds of new recruits. It's going to be good. Yeah. And they also are not all the standard age. Right. So. Well, we got to make up for all the ranks of all the ice that we're going to chop heads off of. Uh-huh. Right? Got to make up those numbers. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Although we should probably screen all of those no, thousands no, 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 of no, no, novices. No, 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 no. They don't recruit from novices and accepted. They, we, we, we learned that they already. They come in already. Yeah. Evil. Exactly. Well, okay. We sometimes we should screen for it. Okay. We should screen for it. Mm, I don't like that. Okay. Well, they're gonna. Okay. I think. I think that that's just like good practice. It'd be like uh, going through customs and when they're like. Hey, do you have anything illegal? Best practice. And I'm like, no. And they're like, okay, you can go. Best practice, like, some that's... would say. <laughs> we caught you lying on this form. Uh, you said you weren't Black Aja, but in fact you, you are, are Black Aja. All right. Shoot. Well, now it's time for Egwene to give a super duper duper super right. inspirational speech yeah because we got all to the, the rebels we got to like the place where the speech is happening yeah so it's in this courtyard and the Aes Sedai and novices are like watching from the upper levels like the, in tower, the tower ones yeah and then we got the and rebels here and then there's here. like a two page speech oh it's so good and here are the cliff notes okay the rebellion was bad we right. have all disgraced ourselves and you know what it might be necessary, but we all have to take responsibility now. Right. It might have been necessary. We had to do it. Do we mention that this was bad? It was so bad. It's bad. It's not a victory. So this is not a victory. Yeah. There's no glory. Mistakes were made on both sides. And now we're here to repair the damage with good hard work. Exactly. And if it's like, hey, if you want to think about all the bad stuff, just like don't think about it. Move forward. Move not forward. Backwards. Not backwards. Upwards, not forwards. And forever? Twirling, 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 towards, twirling towards victory. Freedom. Freedom. Right? I Isn't don't it know. it freedom? It's not like It's that. freedom, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the last battle's coming. The tower has to be whole and unbroken. Let's do this thing. And everybody cheers. And everybody cheers. Hooray. 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 The greatest envelope we've ever seen. Yay. Hooray. Okay, it was really good. <sighs> <laughs> That's the cheering. That's it. <laughs> okay. That's good. You know what? Things went really well. You know I how, agree. You know how we're always I'm talking so about like pumped. things go badly you for know, our characters? I know. This, this is, went really well. It's such a freaking win. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. This feels good. It's been so long since something has legitimately felt good. Yeah. I'm so excited. Right. Yeah. And there's no way anything's going to take that uh, away from you. Oh, it's all going to go bad. I mean, like, think about every other aspect of anything going on. Right. Even within this. Yeah. Like, this is just a momentary yeah. feel good yeah. for our character, Gwen, And I like it. Yeah. We can take I it. like it. We can I enjoyed take it as a reading it. It felt good, which is a pleasant change. I'm glad you're feeling positive. There's been some wins. You get to read two. Cha- we only have two more episodes mm-hmm. and we're done this book. Mm-hmm. We've got two chapters for next episode yes and then the final three chapters for the last one that's right yeah yeah don't worry there's lots of time for things to go badly for I know. everybody i know I so agree. that's okay yeah i know like four whole chapters and an epilogue it's great oh my gosh so it's much great. can happen so much time and this feels wrapped up okay okay i don't think we're coming back here this book okay that's my intuition on that like in the final four chapters yeah Plus epilogue, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. So let's see. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah. So before you go ahead and officially become the Amarillin seat of the White Tower, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with... 
Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Jamie Young, Megan, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Adam, Mozime, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Colby T, and Gabby Young. With music by Audio Nautics. Please be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon exclusive merchandise as a thank you. Plus, you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 45 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show, like information on how to send us shot glasses, how to join our Discord, Discord, how to get in touch with us, you can visit thewheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping other people find us. And if you write us a really nice review and put your Instagram or Twitter handle in the review on Apple Podcasts, we will be picking people at random to be giving out some merchandise like stickers and bookmarks and we'll send them out to those people as a huge thank you. Now be sure to tell a friend Riyadh because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.